I'm Jim McElhinney, uh, a retired surgeon. I was chief of surgery at the Bronx VA from 1975 to 2003. And I first met Ken Appel when I was a resident, a surgical resident, uh, in the VA from 59 to 62 and through 63. And uh, so I was there when he developed the arteriovenous fistula for patients on hemodialysis. Uh, prior to that time, the patients that were in kidney failure and needed dialysis had to uh, have their dialysis run through uh, catheters put into the blood vessels in their arm or wherever uh, to dialyze them. The uh, Scribner shunt was the first shunt which uh, implanted catheters in the vessels and then Dr. Appel conceived of the idea of making an arterio arteriovenous fistula a anastomosis or connection between an artery and a vein in the wrist area. Uh, this enabled the uh, blood supply to be easily accessed with a needle uh, and then removed after the dialysis was performed. As a result of that, the Bronx VA had the uh, largest hemodialysis unit in the New York area uh, because of the uh, development of the AV fistula by Dr. Appel. He worked with Drs. Brescia and Semino, the nephrologists, uh, and it's often called the Brescia Semino shunt, but it really should be called the Appel shunt because he was the one that uh, manufactured it. He had been interested uh, before doing the shunt for dialysis in uh, perhaps uh, using a fistula down in the foot area or ankle area to increase flow through the uh, blood vessels that were being reconstructed for people that had uh, inadequate blood supply to their leg. And so he was familiar with the concept of anastomosing an artery and a vein together. Uh, that he didn't pursue that any further, as far as I know, but then he went on and uh, uh, did many different things, uh, excelled in many different areas of surgery, including vascular surgery. And I was there when he started the fistula, and after he left, uh, I took up the uh, production of the AV fistulas, and then I had several people on my staff who uh, later uh, developed the, uh, didn't develop it, uh, continued to work on the same principle that uh, Dr. Appel had uh, pioneered and developed. Great, and what was your um, understanding of, of the timeline, let's say? I, I, I'm trying to figure out here what uh, the nature of Dr. Appel's association with uh, Chimino and Brescia and you know how it is that um, that it became confused uh, subsequently as to as to who was responsible and you know <laughs> you know all that kind of thing well they were the the senior authors on the paper so I think that's how it became known as the Brescia Semino shunt in Europe uh, some of the surgeons told me that in Europe it was called the Bronx shunt because it was developed at the Bronx VA um, but uh, I had always reminded people in different lectures that I gave around the country that it was Dr. Appel who really developed the shunt that made all of hemodialysis so much more uh, practical and uh, uh, expanded to so many people, people with uh, kidney failure. The, uh, uh, he was uh, recognized at several of the vascular meetings as the developer of the shunt and uh, or the fistula I should call it really <clears throat> and it uh, is just taken for granted today and, and unfortunately not many people realize that he was the one that was the developer of it. 
I was curious as to when you first learned about um, the AV fistula, the idea, and and the actual success of it, and what what your reaction was. Well, that was when I was a surgical resident, uh, first in general surgery and then in cardiothoracic surgery, and uh, I used to sometimes assist and other times just watch Dr. Appel because it's a miniature incision in the wrist and you can't really have too many people working at the same time. But I used to watch uh, to see how he was doing it and what the uh, techniques were and what the problems were associated with the uh, creation of the fistula. And so uh, the people at the Bronx VA after Dr. Appel left uh, continued on and were uh, uh, beca also became very proficient in it, as have people all around the world. Unfortunately, some people look for a, a simple answer to the problem of uh, kidney failure and put in a synthetic graft in the arm or any place in the body to uh, make it easier, uh, graft from the uh, say the wrist or even in the upper arm uh, to uh, from an artery to a vein. The problem with using those synthetic grafts is that their life is quite limited and uh, it then creates other problems uh, that uh, even though it makes it simpler to do initially, the much better solution is the uh, autogenous tissue, the AV fistula. So you are an advocate. You would you would agree with the philosophy of fistula first about the native uh, fistula as opposed to the other alternatives yeah. that have been developed. Absolutely, and also to uh, persist in using the uh, fistula because sometimes it's very easy to just say, "Oh, we'll stick in a graft," and that's quicker and easier. But it's quicker and easier, but it's not as good, not as lasting, and it poses a lot of its own problems. Very good. Um, one last question. Um, were you friendly with Dr. Appel at the time? Were we, how did you, did you uh, socialize at all? What, what did you think of him as a, as a person? Oh, he was a wonderful man. Uh, he was uh, a young attending in surgery and I was a resident, uh, first uh, chief resident in general surgery and then in cardiothoracic surgery. And uh, so we had, uh, we did work together as resident and uh, attending on many cases, and he was an excellent surgeon, all-around surgeon, not just in fistulas and, and vascular surgery, but in all areas of surgery. Well, you always said it was a pleasure to work with you, so I, uh, <laughs> I thank you for your time. Uh, you're quite welcome.